Sharang, uh, is that Sharang there uh, on the screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. good evening. Sir. Uh, good evening. I just now saw the photograph of you with uh, Professor C. N. R. Rao. Uh, can you uh, can you make me a co-host for a moment so that I can share my slides and test it out? Yeah. Sh sure. Sir. Yeah. Good evening, Professor uh, Sachimurthy. Ah, Murthy Garu, how are you? Well, very good. Very good. We, you are not visiting us. No, no, I will, will, will come. You know, Murthy has been asking yeah. me ever since he was appointed, not even, I would say, not even ever think. since he took over. Yeah, yeah almost three years, sir. Sir, yeah, three years. I, I know, I know. Yeah. So the, there is there's a Murthy and a Murthy and a Murthy. We will have a. a check <laughs> we have a Maran Murthy, sir. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So today he must be receiving a check in uh, Tanjavur, isn't it? Tanjavur, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wrote to Swaminathan. I said, look, I know the chief guest that is Saragopan from IIT Kanpur formerly. And three of the four awardees this year, also I know it is Yamaran Murthy, Sandeep Parma, and uh, Govind Raju. Govind Raju. Govind Raju. Only Malik, I do not know. He is in some other institute. Anyway. Yeah, uh, Sharang, you are going to make me a co-host? Uh, yes, it. sir. The the main person, the IT support has to make you the co-host. Okay. I, yeah. I don't have, uh, I, I'll just tell them to make you the co-host. Okay. You know, once that is said, you know, then I can relax. Then then after that, you are the boss. Yes. Professor Murthy, are these guys connected? Vijesh or uh, Vinesh? You're muted. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I, I, I don't see them yet. Yeah, make sure that they are around, okay? So, so that they know. Okay, Vinesh. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, you have... Because he, the Vinesh was there today. I don't know whether he had reached or not. I'm just, I'll go full screen and then... Yeah, this is me. It's my turn now and... Uh... Uh, do you see my full yeah. screen? No issues. Yeah. No. Good. So now, now I can relax and. Uh... Uh, sir, one thing. Uh, can you just uh, try to shift your screens because that might sometimes be a. Uh, in what sense? Uh, oh, okay. Like... Okay. Yes. Uh, you are very important, right? Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. It is shifting. That is working, and. Uh, you know, small, small things that we have learned uh, during the last two years. So I can have my laser pointer also ready. Yeah, good. You know, Srinivasa uh, when I was in uh, Toronto, I would pick up the phone. Somebody will say hello. And I, say, I will say Satyamurti. Yes. Then they will say something, and I will say Bhavnara. Then he will, he or she will start continue talking in Telugu. Okay. Then I would reach a point and say, "Look, I can understand Telugu, but I cannot speak Telugu." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so by default, they presume you, you are Telugu. Yeah. You see, Satyamurthy is not a very common name in Tamil Nadu, although ah, there was yeah. a freedom fighter Satyamurthy, mm -hmm. and many assume it is Satya Narayana Murthy. Mm -hmm. This all song. There, there was an event uh, yeah. there. I was there. Mm -hmm. Ramamurti was there. Ramamurti means he was a secretary DST at that time. Yeah. And then there was one Krishnamurti who was a professor of civil engineering. Mm -hmm. So we had a chat before the function started. And then the vice chancellor asked uh, somebody to present me uh, a bouquet or uh, something. Uh -huh. I said, I said, no, no, it is not me. It is uh, him because uh -huh. it was meant for the secretary DST. You know? Ram. Okay. Uh, so later on, so I told Amurti, sir, I knew uh -huh. that he got confused because he was a colleague Krishnamurti and you are Ramamurti, I am Satyamurti. Uh -huh. so, but in this case, you are, you are, you are called a Srinivasa Murti or Mur Murti only? Uh, I am going here after Professor Murti joined. I am going by SMS. Oh, yes, that's a very convenient, very, uh, you know, 
యూనివర్సిటీ న్యాయపతి వీర వెంకటేశ్వర జగన్నాథ స్వామి ఎన్ విజే స్వామి షరాంగ్ ఎనీ టైమ్ యూ ఫీల్ లైక్ యూ ఇంటర్ అప్ వీఆర్ జస్ట్ యూ నో ఫ్రెండ్స్ చాటింగ్ ఓకే వి స్టిల్ హ్యావ్ టైమ్ ఐ థింక్ వి స్టిల్ హ్యావ్ అబౌట్ కపుల్ ఆఫ్ మినిట్స్ అండ్ యా దిస్ ఇస్ ఫైన్ యా సి సిన్స్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ శ్రీనివాస మూర్తి దేర్ వాస్ నో కన్ఫ్యూషన్ అబౌట్ సత్యమూర్తి ఇన్ కాన్పూర్ అంటిల్ ద డైరెక్టర్ గాట్ అ పిఏ బై నేమ్ కేవి సత్యమూర్తి Mm-hmm. so he would tell somebody oh you are satyamurthy to do it then they will for a moment they will wonder as to why or how he is saying it uh-huh. then then they got used to it then we clarified i was satyamurthy and he was a kvs kvs you know kvs is the registrar of icer bopal hmm. uh-huh. yeah, he yeah. Used, yeah he used to be he joined as a pa to the registrar then later on he became pa and then assistant registrar then deputy registrar Mm-hmm. before he moved so out he so in kanpur we resolved the degeneracy he was kvs and i was at i was still satyamurthy and in bhu also so they have private messes so sir when i was doing for phd in bhu acha you are you know, a bhu have, okay yeah so they were having uh, this uh, private messes we used to have three murtis in the mess <laughs> so that maharaj what was the cook used to get confused so finally they said hey, anda murti chicken murti sada murti now which which category are you i, 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 I fall into sada murti <laughs> the guy who eats egg anda murti and who eats chicken is chicken murti murga murti <laughs> yeah yeah murga murti no no this used to be a problem and my daughter was uh, a resident in chandigarh uh-huh. there was a south indian a patient from army murgesan uh-huh. Uh-huh. and the doctor would get annoyed with him they wo murga ko mera baat sunta nahi hai and so why don't you talk to him in tamil because <laughs> uh-huh. for for him murga means uh, uh, you know chicken oh uh, yeah uh, whereas uh-huh. in tamil nadu you know murga is a kartik <laughs> yeah yeah murga nandan yeah murga uh-huh. murga murgesan a uh, simple murga yeah sir i think we are in time at the most of the people i think are watching over youtube yeah yeah don't don't, don't worry about the number you know yeah. uh, for an artist uh, you know we are all performing artists in some sense uh, of course you know it's, it's nice if there are lots of people uh, listening to you or watching you but otherwise you just enjoy the performance yourself and uh, it is new i think i went to uh, this place kaisislautan jayan murthy knows that place very well mm-hmm. and the university the host was uh, embarrassed he said you know there are only six uh, faculty members and one postdoc but you know all six are very senior people of course i knew most of the six people and there was a dem troder you know he must be i don't know whether the dem troder is around or not if he is around he would be 90 or so there's a famous book of his on molecular spectroscopy and uh, there was a bergman and then there was somebody else etc so actually the, the number doesn't really matter and one thing nice about this virtual meetings is that you are not intimidated by the size of the audience or the lack of it this morning i was listening to somebody on the drdo uh, you know evolution mm-hmm. and he was feeling uncomfortable now and then can you see me can you hear me you know uh then some of us kept the video on and you know because you nod your head and this and that you know the speaker knows that he has not lost the audience yeah that that also professor murthy assures uh, ensures we all join only through video <coughs> well, wonderful yeah 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 <laughs> otherwise <laughs> one wouldn't know you just log in and then leave the video <laughs> the link on and go that disappear right good evening professor vanka Yeah, yeah, good, good evening. evening. Uh, Yashwan, how are you? Where are you? I am at Bombay. Bombay. 
Yeah, I just heard a little while ago that yeah. yeah. I saw your name and then you your name disappeared then uh, murti that is jayan murti yeah. <laughs> that you are you are you know, you are in bombay right now yeah, yeah. yeah. everything is fine yeah, yeah sathi uh, padma uh, siddhar yeah, 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 yeah everybody good, good. Is convey yeah. my greetings to all of them sure sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. now i see you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. how is uh, subhana ji she is fine she is in the you know oh, okay. she is oh, not okay. in front in the chair but she is in the next room she is having the video and the audio on. okay okay, okay. Good. good maybe i can ask her to come and say hello before so we want to come for one minute and say hello no she probably has the ear plugs so. okay okay, okay. No Uh, sir, I think uh, we crashed more than fifty on Zoom itself. So shall shall we proceed that time for? I think yeah. Let's get started, more people. Uh, uh, Sharan. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Suna wants to say hello to all of you. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, ma'am. Namaste. Namaste. I was listening to it in the YouTube, and it is slightly. lagging no so i just heard that he is telling you that i asked subna to come and say hello to you oh, that by in the middle is seen was a murti oh, jain murti seen was jain sharanga here and of course here so nice to see all of you wonderful wonderful so now wait sharang please yes yes sir you can mute all of uh, all others right you can you can forcibly mute all of yes sir <clears throat> good evening to one and all present here my name is sharang ayer and i'll be the host for today's uh, program i would like to welcome our guest uh, professor n satyamurthy uh, the science and technology council of isa tirunathapuram would like to wish everyone on the occasion of the national science day every year india celebrates national science day to remember the discovery of the raman effect a finding that also earned uh, Sir C. V. Raman, the Nobel Prize in 1930 in physics. As all of you may know, every National Science Day has a pre-decided theme. Let's uh, shed some light on this year's theme. This year's theme is integrated approach in science and technology for a sustainable future. A four-fold integrated approach can help us change our current working culture and shift towards a more science, science and technology integrated approach. Uh, the four-fold path being integration of all scientific departments which can work on a theme based approach extended scientific integration en encompassing engineering medical and other institutions extra scientific integration involving the identification of the needs of other ministries like jal shakti railways etc etc an extended science driven all inclusive approach in integrating startups and industry now let us proceed to today's prime event the national science day lecture which will be delivered by the chief guest professor n satyamur the audience is requested to keep their mics off throughout the lecture and not spam the message box there will be a question answer session at the end of the talk please use the raise hand feature to ask a question ask the question only after the host asks you to unmute going on towards the introduction of our today's speaker Professor N Satyamurthy is the founding director of the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research Mohali in Punjab and the former president of the Chemical Research Society of India. He is also serving as the honorary director of the Center for Cooperation in Science and Technology among Developing Societies Chennai. After obtaining his BSc and MSc degrees from Annamalai University, Professor Satyamurthy pursued his research at the Oklahoma State University. where he received his phd degree in 1975 after a post doctoral stint at the university of toronto working with jc uh, polanyi a nobel laureate on chemical kinetics he returned to india to join the department of chemistry of iit kanpur as a faculty member he has spent a considerable number of years at iit kanpur he is a visiting professor at many institutions including iisa tirunelveli His research areas are in theoretical chemistry and molecular reaction dynamics. 
for his, for his outstanding contributions professor satyamurthy has been recognized with several awards some of which include shanti swarup bhatnagar prize in chemical sciences sir c v raman award by hariyom ashram trust the professor navneeta uh, rao best teacher award by the andhra pradesh academy of sciences j c bose international fellowship of the department of science and technology shastra c n r rao award for chemistry and material sciences by shastra university and sir c v raman medal by indian national science academy He is a fellow of all three Indian Academies of Science and also the fellow of the World Academy of Science. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us here today. I would like to request you continue with the talk. Uh, sir, uh, you are on mute. what happened uh, do we... uh i'm not sure he should be able to unmute it yeah he's there he's there you're still muted professor satyamurthy yeah. <clears throat> you are still muted looks like professor satyamurthy i know yeah mm. can you hear me now it's better now yes yeah. yeah actually i got stuck with the laser pointer you know some of the steps that i thought would be safe looks like it is not that safe well uh, first of all thank uh, sharang for a kind introduction there are some some factual uh, uh, things that as I, i'm i'm no longer the director of the ccsds chennai that has been wound up but we will not go into them but uh, it's so nice of you to say such nice words and i am particularly uh, <coughs> thankful to professor jayan murthy director i sir tirumanandapuram for inviting me to be present on this special occasion so he has been uh, asking me to come to i sir tirumanandapuram ever since he took over as the director i look forward to being physically there in i sir tirumanandapuram before too long and uh, i didn't realize or i didn't know uh, i didn't realize what sharang said that this year's theme is integrated uh, snt approach for sustainable development etc etc uh, that is uh, clearly the government uh, you know, government makes statements and declares things all i can say is that uh, it turns out the talk that i give uh, does take an integrated approach uh, whether it will lead to anything towards sustainable development of the people nation etc i do not know this talk is as a scientist and a scientist way of looking at it and uh, i chose this uh, topic uh, passion flower a little bit of uh, science behind it i purposely put this a little bit because my understanding of passion flower is very little so i do not want to say that i have learnt a lot about the passion flower uh, with that little uh, 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 declaration uh, or disclaimer now let us get on with the talk why would anybody talk about uh, passion flower on a national science day you know we are supposed to be celebrating uh, Uh, C V Raman, I see a picture of uh, you know C N R Rao, Sharang receiving something or giving something to uh, Professor C N R Rao. You know, it, it's, it's uh, you talk about work of such people. Why talk about uh, uh, my work on uh, passion flower? The reason I spoke to speak, uh, chose to speak is the following. It drives home the point how science works. You know, science we always start with the curiosity. that way every one of us when we start growing up as a child we actually are very good scientists except that we do not know how to make observations how to you know document etc but the curiosity is there it is slowly as you grow older and grow older the curiosity starts going down you take things for granted 
if you look at the history of raman effect in 1923 ramanathan kv ramanathan uh, he observed this um, some traces of fluorescence i know he must have told his uh, professor raman and they must have thought it is some impurities but they didn't let it go they distill they started distilling and redistilling they did alcohol they did benzene they did toluene and they did a whole bunch of uh, liquids and they kept on seeing this traces and the next couple of years he was very sure that it is nothing to do with uh, impurities it is some fluorescence but it is weak then krishnan had joined as a student and ramanathan and the senior and the junior krishnan they wrote a paper together and by the time from traces of fluorescence it became a weak fluorescence then it got refined into feeble fluorescence all this is documented and then but they were not uh, i mean they wrote papers you know this they, they shine light you know coming through this etc they rec- they recorded what they observed and they published what they recorded but only in 1928 raman realized it was not just a fluorescence it was something more it was actually light scattering it is not the relay scattering which here you normally you see the tindall effect in the room with there is a dust and you see that you know uh, light scattering all the time the rising sun is uh, red and the setting sun is red and all that stuff you can talk about but this was something different and he was so sure that he announced it on february 28 1928 and as my friend kankan bhattacharya says by 1920 the february 29 1928 the press carried it and he himself presented it in a, in a meeting the title of the talk was the new radiation and that was published all the de- these details all there in the indian academy of sciences website you look into raman collected works etc here there are three paragraphs which tell you the about the traces or a trace of fluorescence here then later on it was called a weak fluorescence later on ramanathan and krishnan called it a feeble fluorescence so you make an observation you start studying it and it's also important as to what else happens around that time around that time compton effect was known the x ray scattering was known and uh, actually 1927 compton got the nobel prize for his discovery and this is all in the back of raman's mind so he immediately said aha so this is the optical analog of what compton has observed with the x ray immediately he knew it was uh, Uh, light scattering and he went on presented and that is the incident spectrum and that is the scattered spectrum uh, you know i realized from a friend of mine uh, for a historian of science it's very important to look at some of the originals to understand and appreciate what was accomplished what was the background what was the you know uh, uh, context in which these dis- these discoveries were made and raman then you know recorded it and of course he knew how to measure the wavelength and he went on to measure the wavelength he knew the wavelength of the incoming light they are all listed on the left side i don't expect you to read these numbers here but what is important is that didn't matter what the wavelength they was of the incident light the outcoming light changed the wavelength but the difference in frequency was common and it corresponded to the vibrational frequency of benzene this was the spectrum the results for uh, liquid benzene and he could conclude that the difference between the incident and outgoing light corresponded to vibrational frequency of uh, benzene and of course history is made and the story goes that uh, you know he knew he would get the nobel prize and etc etc we will not get into it but what is important was that choosing making an observation looking at the problem carefully and analyzing the results and of course there are people successful people who would say like john polani would say you should be at the right time and looking at the right problem asking the right question and getting the right answers if you want to get a nobel prize uh, since my intention was not to get a nobel prize i went on to uh look at some some flower in our garden i will come to that in a minute and that is a photograph of raman in iscs kolkata 
in the early days when you know when he was they were studying what came to be known as the raman effect and this was apparently the last photograph of raman what is interesting here is that the old man 82 year old when uh, he passed away uh, he was holding these two flowers in his hand all these days until i came to bangalore i thought it they were roses but i realized from my morning walk that it is not roses i think it is not roses i never checked with anybody i leave it for the students to find out what flower it was that he was uh, holding i see a lot of it in 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 bangalore i dedicate this uh, talk to uh, the memory of uh, raman because he continues to remain a source of inspiration after that there have been so many scientists in in this country you know we talk about uh, saha bose jc bose and uh, sn bose and many others who have come but what is important is that interesting is that uh, raman remains uniquely raman raman effect itself has gone on to have various things we have a raman we have a resonant raman we have a stimulated raman we have a surface enhanced raman you know and there is a tamil movie called raman ethanai raman adi there are so many forms of raman this discovery of raman effect has led to many discoveries in some sense you can say even the discovery of lasers can be traced back to the raman effect now let us come to the uh, talk for today and before that this morning i was uh, uh, surprised i noted that today's morning hindu carried this little uh, column a picture uh, apparently then in kerala there is a place which is called uh, uh, national so there uh, there is a place named after uh, raman and they have uh, shown a picture of this flower kurinji it is a blue kurinji if it is a true kurinji it should blossom only once in 12 years but then there are so many varieties of kurinjis whether this is a unique kurinji which blossoms once in 12 years or not i do not know since this lab is there in kerala i leave it for you to find out it is called the cv raman laboratory of ecological informatics in the digital university kerala well i do not know about the digital university but the flower is there for you to uh, find out uh, where it is and uh, and if it is uh, truly kurinji or not one thing in science we know is that you don't take anything for granted just because somebody told you you have to check and verify and today google enables you to do when you want some look something up in my days we had to go to the library look at books and books and then search pages and then try to dig out the information today google will help you but then based on your past searching google can also mislead you you know they say that they use artificial intelligence etc because they want to make sure that your search leads to what you want to are looking for but your future search is decided by your previous searches so take google with a pinch of salt do take the help of uh, google let's come back to science what i am going to emphasize during the talk at some point when i when i you know 50 minutes or so is out i will stop but one thing that is repeatedly emphasized in today's talk on a national science day is that science consists of observation recording the observation interpreting the results and publishing in a scientific journal this is a complete process and that is what constitutes the practice of science and that's what i'm going to demonstrate how i do not know how many of you have seen passion flower before seeing the first passion flower that i saw i had seen passion fruit once i was in germany and they once they found out i was a vegetarian they had to give me some fruits and one of the fruits was i did not know what it was my host said it is a passion fruit you know we kind of take it take out the uh, meat in it uh, then it is very gooey you know it's not something that you like if you have not tasted it before and if you are traveling to sikkim for example you can drink passion fruit juice you can buy passion fruit jam you can eat passion fruit ice cream this you can probably eat in your neighborhood ice cream parlor but let us see i have not still shown you the passion flower i must say uh, some acknowledgement here 
this work has been possible particularly in isa tiruvananthapuram i want to state this all the actors in this act were undergraduates of isa mohali and of course i had a lot of colleagues from various disciplines biologists chemists physicists and even earth and environmental scientists helping me in this study and that is picture of isa mohali ajayan murthy has been there uh more so before the new campus was formed when the first year when we started he helped us enormously by coming from he would come from kanpur by shatabdi give lectures during the weekend and go back by shatabdi uh, murthy i am very grateful to you you know for doing those wonderful lectures in the very first year of the institute later on we moved into our campus just like uh, your tiruvananthapuram campus moved to the the new place which is beautiful i used to tell your first director when the campus is done it is going to be the most beautiful campus of all isers hmm. even though i came from a beautiful campus iser mohali i still think that iser tiruvananthapuram is uniquely beautiful i look forward to being there now i am told that during murthy's time it has been more or less completed i know it's always wonderful to be in your place during particularly during monsoon time to get in and get out may be a difficult but i suspect it will be a beautiful experience to be there at that time and before i forget because in the end i may run out of time these are people who helped me uh, my wife i must mention specifically because uh, she went about you know getting plants for the garden and at that time i did not really pay attention as to which plants she was buying and later on it turned out uh, one of the plants that uh, she bought and got installed in the campus helped me enormously in whatever i am going to talk about and there are many colleagues dr ng prasad sudeep mandal tr rao ram yadav ram no shastri arijit day and a bunch of undergraduates surender goyal then rosmi reji incidentally comes from kerala agastya bhatti then siddharth shankar tripathi they are all uh, undergraduate student uh, that is the passion flower the botanical name that is for that is passiflora incarnata you know the name has to be written i am telling this to the non botanists the name has to be italicized the first is capital the second is not is not to be cat, uh, capitalized etc some places it is called the krishna kamala and you know uh, shrinivasa murthy probably knows this from his uh, andhra probably it is called the krishna kamala and i think in 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 bengal it's probably called a jumka you will uh, know why it is called a jumka but doesn't matter what the name is it's a beautiful flower it's breathtakingly beautiful when i gave this talk somewhere somebody came and told me you know this is called a pandavas and kauravas flower there's a whole mahabharat in it i said what do you mean by mahabharat did you see that flower there is a, you see panjali in the middle surrounded by five pandavas So we were surrounded by the hundred kauravas. I said that's interesting. So I learned something new. You know, there's one thing nice about our profession. Any time you tell something, you always learn something. But in the audience, my grandson was sitting. That time he was even, you know, he was very young kid at that time. He was uh, mischievously. He came and asked me, you know, Tata, you know, Tamil is Tata. I don't think there are hundred fibrils there. i could have asked him to go and count it but i decided to count it myself and he was right there was not 100 fibril i leave it for the students to verify and find out how many are there but you can say figuratively there are about 100 fibrils and compared to 5 100 you know is not a bad number you know there's an order of magnitude difference in the number of fibrils sometimes i will call it a filament now that is why it is called a jumka it's almost like what the girls wear on the on this side you see that little green one and when it blossoms that is how it looks like technically there is a difference between petal and the sepal i leave it for you to find out what the difference is then i learned quickly from my biology colleagues that you know you must measure i i told this professor tr rao he said do you have you measured i said yeah you know maybe 2 3 cm no no it is not enough you must measure several flowers and do a statistical analysis you must give an average length you must give a deviation etc uh i don't i you know i because you see unlike uh, physics or chemistry where you think you measure carefully because it is it can be repeated every flower is different the sizes are slightly different some are big some are small so you need to have some number to compare with at least you know it is 3 cm it is not 3 feet 
it is not three millimeters. You have a front view, the side view, and you know back view, etc. To characterize the flowers, it is not easy to identify a flower when you strip the petals and the sepals out. That is how it look like. It has all the important ingredients. You know there is this uh, top here, and then there is a ovary there, and then there is a base here, and that is a sideways look of it. Uh, actually, my wife recorded it in real time, but I'm not able to play that uh, recording. Pardon me for that. When you look at the opening of the flower, it takes about 20 minutes. It's beautiful. If you have an opportunity, please uh, do uh, look at it. And uh, if you have an iPhone, go ahead and uh, record it. It opens up like this. And what is interesting, she said, look at it. The anthers, they turn around. They turn around. There are five of them. They turn around one after another. It's almost like a choreography. You know, as if somebody, the good Lord told them how to conduct themselves before they settle down. And then they all settle down like this, as if then, then the pollens are here. See, when they open, they are like this. When they turn around, they are like this. The pollens are here, facilitating the honeybees to come in, pick up the nectar on the way out. They get their wings coated with the pollens, and now they are ready to go out and say, and do cross pollination. This is probably a way of saying thank you to the flower for the nectar. And you can see the documentary evidence for it, how the honeybee comes in. And there are two layers of filaments. And between the two, the honeybee comes in. And you know, sorry, above the filament, below the anther, that is where the honeybee comes in and looks for the nectar. Uh, some a botanist I know, Shivanna, he had identified the source of nectar. He as a botanist, an excellent botanist, has even measured how much honey you get to per flower. Of course, you can get it for 100 flowers divided by 100, then you get uh, the amount of honey nectar per flower. I was excited. I looked at the opening and the evening I saw it closing very slowly. I recorded the closing and I got excited about it and recorded it. When I recorded, I meant you know, I took the help of my student and got it done. But we came to a conclusion, the opening is mechanical. Since the closing is not reversible, the material is clearly viscoplastic. The biologists don't worry about these things. You know, they say, as far as they are concerned, the job is over. The day the, the blossom was there, the honey bees have come and collected the honey. Either the, fl the flower became a seed or it didn't become a seed, didn't matter. The job is done. Then I talked to my colleagues, they were all ready to help me. And they're nice people. And being a director, of course, it helps. And one of them helped me record the, uh, you know, I never understood until I began to talk to these biologists. They have, they need so many microscopes. They want a microscope, you say, okay. Next day they say, I want uh, this microscope. You say, okay. Then next day they come, why well, we want this microscope. I said, how about that microscope? No, no, no that microscope is different. That is only 20,000. This is only 20 lakhs. And this one is only two crores. They use all kinds of microscopes to look at the species at different levels. Now, this is a bright field image that Prasad gave me of this anther. It told you the anther, which is sticking out like this, turns over like this. And there must be a fulcrum on which this happens. And that is what it is. And uh, I managed to get a measurement done. You know, once I, he told me, what is the magnification? I could measure this, found it to be 1.374 millimeter. Whether it's accurate up to third decimal place, I am not sure. Okay, I will, if I have to bet it, I will bet up to second decimal place. But what is important is a machinery. This is essentially, it's a micro uh, machine. Okay, and, uh, it, but it is all driven chemically within the system. I don't want to call it chemical rotor, but there is a chemical machinery that drives it. Then he cut the anther and showed me the image. And he, as a botanist, knew that in all likelihood, the anther will consist of a twin sac. And sure enough, when he got a SEM image done, and there was a twin sac, and you see this a tons of pollen. Every bit of it was a fascinating learning experience for me. And then he got another blow up picture done, done by Sudeep Mandal. And they are each individual pollen. You know, you hear about uh, diffusion, Brownian motion, pollens floating on the liquid water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is a close-up image of one pollen of passion flower. 
Oh, he said, you know, it has a crumpled look because it can stick to the wings of the honeybee. I said, okay, if that is what it is, that is what it is. And at that stage, you know, I thought I had enough results, I must publish. And I tried to submit a paper, it was rejected. And I appealed to the referee and the editor and the decision remained the same. They said everything, whatever I have reported, they're all known, there is nothing new. I said, okay, my first publication was a failure. I'm not able to publish. But I knew a little bit about the frequency of flowering. I come from a village. We used to see all kinds of flowers, different trees. You know, there is a mango, there is a tamarind in Tamil Nadu. We, we were told if one year a lot of mangoes come, that year tamarind won't be much. Next year, mangoes will not be many, but tamarind will be many. So it's kind of an alternating cycle. Hmm. But mango is, you know, once in a year, it's a seasonal flower, seasonal fruit, seasonal, whatever you call it. And there are many flowers which are, you know, circadian. They follow the cycle of the, 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 the sun 24 hours. Some of them, they may blossom in the night. Some, many of them, they blossom in the daytime. And many flowers, they just last for a day. And some flowers, of course, can last several days. That's something special about the orchids. You know, orchids will last for several days. I, some of us went to Pakistan and they welcomed us with a bouquet of flowers. We carried it around. Well, I didn't carry it. I gave it to somebody. My friend carried it around, brought it back to India, kept it in his bag and forgot about it. And after one week, he opened it and saw the flower was still intact. He said, beautiful, you know, this is biotechnology that enables you. As it is, orchids have a longer lifetime. Now let us come back to the passion flower. One day I was just coming out of my house, you know, waiting for the you know, driver to come. And I saw there was one flower in, in the garden. It happened to be April 21, 2014. And I was curious. So I saw, then I asked the Mali, what is the flower? He said, Sab, it is called uh, Rakri or some such thing. He called it Punjabi, he gave some name. Next day I saw there were two flowers. Then I asked him, wasn't there only one flower yesterday? He said, yes. But I thought, though, hey, he said, yes, there are two flowers. You know, usually the Malis and, you know, drivers, they all agree with whatever you say. And the next day, there were four flowers. I was surprised. One, two, four. What's going on? I said, let us write it down. So I wrote it down. And next day, there were seven flowers. Not exactly eight, but seven was close to eight. And the next day, it was 16. It was not, maybe not exactly 16. It was either 15 or 17, I'm telling from my memory. But I have preserved the record. You know, if you really want to verify the record for the authenticity, I can produce the document for it. Then I said, look, this case is not sustainable. You know, Sharang mentioned today's team is supposed to be the SNT for sustainable development. For a, for a flower, this is not a sustainable development. Whether the government of India knows or not, you and I know or not, the flowers know, the plants know sustainable development. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, you know, 64, it cannot go on forever. The curve has to turn around. Now it is serious business. Now that means we must keep record and see what happens. How far will it go? So here, since I'm told a lot of students are uh, was, was watching or listening because it's a science day, I must remember the story of the poet. You know, many of you must have heard this story. Maybe you saw it in Amar Chitrakata. I do not know. The king was pleased with the poet and asked him, what do you want? He said, sir, give me one grain today and tomorrow you double and the day after you double and the day after you double. He looked at the poet. Are you sure you know what you're asking for? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. King said, done. Give this guy one grain of rice. So the poet took it and went away. Next day, they gave him two grains of rice. No big deal. Next day, it was four grains. Next day, it was... Eight grains, then it was 16, 32, 64, 128, you know, then 256 and 512, uh, then 1024. Then what happens? Which means in about 10 days, you have 2 to the power 10, that's about 1000 grains. Forget about the 14. 1000 grains. So if you have another 10 days, another 10 days in month, it is going to be 1000 to the power 3. That means you are talking about that. Uh, 10 to the power 9 a billion grains. I post this uh, on our website, you know, in Aisar Mohali website, we used to have some scientific questions at some point. I had asked the students, 
how much does one grain of rice weigh? Of course, he will ask, you know, which rice it is. It's a parboiled rice or it's a white rice or it's a red rice. Doesn't matter. You choose your rice. Find out the weight of one grain of rice. It's an important scientific exercise. It is a good idea to take 100 of them and weigh, take 1,000 of them and weigh and get an average weight of one grain. Well, the average weight is good enough for all our purposes. But if in a month you get a billion grains, then you know not the next month, the next day, it is going to be 2 billion. And the next day, it is going to be 4 billion, etc. So sure enough, the granary was getting exhausted. And there are interesting questions that go with it. What are the cost implications? If you buy a kilo of rice, it is 52 rupees. You want to buy 10 kilos, it'll give you 10% discount. If you want to buy 10 bags, he will give you additional 10% discount. But if you say, I want a truck load of rice, he will say, sir, wait. And he will try to find out why you are buying a truck load of rice. If there is a wedding in your family, then he doesn't care. But if something else, you are running a business, then the price changes. Now you can imagine what is going to happen in Tiruvannadapuram. If somebody is buying a truck of rice and buys 10 trucks of rice, you know, the, it's going to affect the grain market. It's an interesting economic study, market study. Let us come back to passion flow. So now by now, we have started recording in all seriousness as a scientific study. Either data has to be verified. I requested my driver to help me count. I requested the guard to count. And uh, then I would ask the student to come and double check morning count, verify in the evening count. Still, there would be some human error. You know, some of the numbers could be off by 10%. But what is uh, important is that the number of flowers on April 21, 1 went up to 2, 4, 8, 15 and reached the maximum 145 or so. It is not a sustainable development. It had to turn around and came down. I was surprised because I was low. I learned from a little uh, primary and uh, the rhyme in the school. If you put one, uh, one uh, bucket of water, you will get one flower. Two buckets of water will give you two flowers. More water you put, more jasmine flowers will come. Here, I didn't do anything. I didn't interfere. Mali was doing his job. Month of April, May, no rain, uh, no northwest, uh, southeast, whatever. And what is it causing the number of flowers to go down? I have no idea. And then it went up again, back to 145, 160, and went down to zero, which means we thought on April 21, May 21, 22, there was not a single flower in the plant. I had not known this before. I continued. And we watched until November, December, the season end. So, okay, it's a very interesting result. Being a chemist, having dealt with the chemical oscillations, I said, here is an interesting chemical oscillations. And you get a period. And there is a chaos superimposed. I've done some studies on chaos and fractals, oscillations, etc. So, I could see oscillations with superimposed chaos, very typical nonlinear dynamical system. You know, each one of us looks at it from our own angle. So as a physical chemist, having taught chemical kinetics, chemical oscillations to my student in Kanpur and in Mohali, I could not help thinking. But it was very nice to see the patterns. It is not sustainable. Therefore, eventually, at the end of the season, it dies off. But there is a periodicity. It is a 30-day cycle. I was giving this talk somewhere and then somebody came and told me, you know, in Kerala, we know some plants. The flowering coincides with Amavasya and Parnamasya. So I went back and looked at the date. Yes, so April 21, was it a pre-Amavasya? Then when it peaked, was it Amavasya? In that year, it coincided either with Amavasya or with uh, the new moon day. I said, I will publish. Then my friend biologist said, no, 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 you cannot publish one year data. You must say that show it is reproducible. Collect some more data. Then the biologists are not worried about time. I'm sure Srinivasal Murthy would vouch for this. Murthy wants, there are so many Murthys here. Jayan Murthy being a chemist would like to have quicker results. But Srinivasal Murthy is, is ready to wait for biology takes its own time. So we said, well, oh, by the way, a physicist told me, you must be a Fourier transform. 
If you have oscillations, you have Fourier transform, you get a frequency. Done. The frequency matches with what we had estimated. It had 30 days of frequency. As I said, my biology colleague told me that I must collect more data. So I asked the student who helped me collect the data, you know, surrender, we must collect for 2015. He said, yes, sir, I will do. I said, you know, you must be there on April 21 because Kushwan Singh, Kushwan Singh had said that his, in his garden, the plant gives flower exactly on the same day in February, year after year. Somewhere I have read Kushwan Singh for whatever reason, Yashwant Wankar knows why I read Kushwan Singh. In 2015, April 21, sure enough, the flowering started. It went up and down. The number of flowers were much less. I was a little disappointed. And by this time, the student has been around, so I gave him a free hand and he started doing experiments with the plants. And you know what happened? The plant died. I was crestfallen. After two months of data collection, the plant died. How do I publish this result? My friend, Professor T.R. Rao told me, you know, too bad, Dr. Satyamurti, why don't you ask Mr. Satyamurti to plant one more? So I requested my wife, can you plant some more? She took the help of Mali. And Mali was, you know, my wife is smarter than me. My Mali was even smarter than her. He said, Saab, amne char laga diya. he put four plants. I said, why do you need four plant? One plant is good enough. You will see why they were wiser and I got benefit out of their wisdom. 2016, they're all small plants that have grown up and they were giving me flowers, not of the order of 145. Since you cannot read these numbers, I will read it for you. One plant had about nine, eight flowers maximum. Hmm. Another one plant had 160 maximum. Some had 100, some had 60 maximum. I was not very happy with this data because they don't tell me the kind of picture that I got in 2014. They had a very nice 30-day cycle. And this is not, well, this here I can see approximately a 30-day cycle. That is not a 30-day cycle. You know, we like to look at the data and we like to interpret, we like to write a paper, and we like to see that the results kind of go with what we are thinking. You know, generally this is how scientists think. I waited one while I said, okay, this is the time and Rosmi Reji, you know, she was an undergraduate from Kerala. She said, sir, I can do summer project with you. I said, yes, yes, you can do. This is the summer project for you. And you can take the help of the Mali God, et cetera. And she, so she collected data very faithfully. And next year, she had more data. And this was the summer I was ready, getting ready to leave. I said, Mohali, but I told Rosmi, please continue to collect the data. And she continued to collect the data. When I left, I said, Mohali, I requested my successor director, please allow the student to come and collect the data. And he was very kind enough. Dr. Sarkar came. He said, oh, if she can come and collect the data, I have no problem. So she collected the data. By then it became clear that there is certain oscillation, certain periodicity, but it was not as nice as the 2014 data. I said, let us put all the data together and plot. In the beginning, you can see there is approximate 30 day cycle. And then you can use your imagination a little bit. If you say if that is 40, then around 80, you can see 80 or so you can see a dip here. And then 110, you don't see it. You can do a little bit of a imagination. I was not very happy with this. You do a Fourier transform, it will give you not only one frequency, it will give you a few more frequencies. How do I interpret the data? I had a problem, serious problem. And I decided to write it up. And I thought I had found some very interesting result. I must publish it. And the referee, as it happens to many of us, Jayan Murthy will vouch for it because we have talked a lot about his papers, my papers going to the referee, editor, et cetera, cycle. This is a tough referee. He tore my paper to pieces. And then he was kind enough. He also told me what I should do. And then finally he said, you know, can you see if there is any synchronicity in the flowering? If it is there, then it is an important discovery. Not too many flowers show synchronicity in their pulsed flowering. See, instead of a temporal cycle, et cetera, I was using the chemist language. Here, the uh, botanist, <coughs> I presume he was a botanist, he was using his technical language, synchronous. That means not, it's a pulsed flowering. You see the pulses there. And different plants are in synchronicity with each other. Are they blossom in a synchronous fashion? 
this is very important for for the botanists you know from the but very important for the bees it's very important for pollination very important for the harvesting of fruits so coming back to sharang this is very important scientific development for a sustainable development passion flower may not interest may not have much economic value that actually that is not true if you try to buy passion flower for your girlfriend or for the valentines day it could be very expensive in the united states it can be as much as a 10 dollar per flower the the leaves are known to be uh, you know they are known to make good tea they are they get rid of your anxiety you can go to sleep peacefully after having that uh, passive passion flower uh, tea so if you buy very nice package passion flower tea very expensive you pay 10 times more than what you pay for normal tea in kerala you can have benefits out of it some of it real some of it imaginary i have not tried myself so i will not be able to say but what i will say is that we listen to whatever the referee asked and answered all the questions and look for synchronicity and it is right there in front of you the data from different plants are this rosmi came up with this brilliant idea she said sir i will plant them in different colors so she is so one flower one flower just gives the blue color that plus another flower gives you the red color that plus another flower gives another plant gives you the green color all four plants put together gives you the violet color this established synchronous pulse flowering the referee was happy we were able to publish our first paper in current science and uh, so it is there in the literature it has i didn't get any phone call from stockholm it took 5 years for us to make this simple conclusion still there is a long way to go that is our paper you know all written all in an acceptable fashion but then we asked the question my biology friend asked me satyamurthy can you find out if it very depends on the temperature variation so i took the help of my colleague in environmental science he said sir we record all the temperature humidity everything i think every hour or on the hour they collect data it's been there around from 2012 even today that uh, that recording continues so one thing that iser mohali would give you is real time data for the last 10 years and hopefully it will continue for as long as the institute is there and you can see the red, the pink color and the blue color they are the upper limit and the lower limit that is you know early in the morning during the peak of the day etc and their temperature fluctuations from april 21 to november is not in is not the same as what you find in the number of flowers so the answer to the question is does the oscillation depend on the external temperature the answer is no does it depend on humidity no april it is dry may very dry june it is onset of monsoon july monsoon august monsoon september monsoon retreat and october november you know the temperature has dropped humidity has dropped my friends and how about photo period you know the sun rises little later little later and then earlier earlier and so on and you know from april to uh, november the photo period per day changes there is a small fluctuation in this so it doesn't depend upon the photo period if it doesn't depend upon the temperature doesn't depend upon humidity doesn't depend upon a photo period what does it depend upon well when i learned that that means that there is some endogenous factor that means something within the plant that is responsible and that is causing you know a lot of experts and i'm sure some of the people listening many people listening to my talk must be experts on this business chronobiology you know how things uh, depend upon time things that uh, how are the flowers formed this is a very important question from a fundamental biology developmental biology point of view the flowers are different from leaves but they have a common origin the leaves are involved in photosynthesis the leaves the flowers are important for pollination seed formation and keep the cycle going there is definitely a photodynamic simulation because this flower opens up in the morning when the sun rises and then it withers away by evening by that time the decision is made whether it the seed is to be formed or not a lot of biochemistry takes place within the plant 
Now, if I can be asking this question, in, let's say in, in a, a few years ago, you can imagine many people must have asked this question several years ago, decades ago. Sure enough, almost 100 years ago, somebody studied chrysanthemum. And he is in Russia, Shailakyan. He came to the conclusion that there is a difference between the vegetative phase, that is the plants that leaves forming and the flowering phase. And he proposed there must be something that induces flowering. So he called it florigen. Then some wise guy said, look, if there is a flower inducing chemical, there must be a anti florigen It's called anti florigen And it took some time. And finally, they found out experimental proof. These are all proteins. You know, they are proteins which are causing flowering, the proteins which are inhibiting their flowering. In, in general, there is a florigen and there is an anti florigen for, for Srinivasala Murthy, you know, Drosophila is an important species. For the botanist, Arabidopsis thaliana, I have given all, you know, aspects of the plant. I, in, I do not know the name for it in English, in, in, in common English or in Malayalam or Tamil. Let's say so it's very important. These people have studied it to the great extent. So here they knew which protein was causing flowering and which and how the florigen binds with the diurnally oscillating phospholipid. You know, this has to do with the, you know, 24 hour cycle, etc. The biochemistry of flowering is known in this plant, but nobody has studied, identified so far, the florigen and anti-florigen in passiflora. I, every time I give this talk or a related talk, I hope some biologists, some biochemists will come forward and study and say, this is the protein that is responsible for flowering here. As I mentioned a little while ago, this cycle reminds me of a chemical oscillations. The, you know, the famous chemical oscillator is belusov zabotonsky reaction. You know, they both scientists in Russia announced this discovery. Nobody took them seriously until, you know, it was repeated and repeated. And then very in, in simple terms, it is a malonic acid undergoing bromination forming bromomalonic acid. Yashwant will be very happy that finally I have an organic reaction written here and the bromomalonic acid <laughs> will undergo further bromination and eventually it will get oxidized and will give you carbon dioxide, you know, boring. The carbon dioxide, this process is catalyzed by cerium-3, cerium-4, there's a couple. You can monitor it by using ferroin indicator, which is iron-2, iron-3 couple. That is a visual way of looking at the oscillation in this reaction. Ertel, who got Nobel Prize for various things on surface studies, he had shown the CO plus oxygen giving CO. This is what happens in your exhaust. When you drive around and the carbon monoxide comes, it gets oxidized to carbon dioxide, it comes in the exhaust. And it happens in the presence of a platinum, which catalyzes, and it goes through oscillations. Now, these oscillations were studied in a different context more than 100 years ago. It was called a Lotka mechanism. He published in the Journal of American Chemical Society. You know, therefore, he must have been a chemist. There's an interesting story behind it in Hudson Bay. You know, this is a famous shop in, in, in Canada. At those days, 1910, they would collect the, the fur from animals. The farmers, you know, would catch the rabbits, would catch the fox and so on, and would sell it to the Hudson Bay. They maintained careful records. They found out in one year, there was more fox hide coming in. In another year, there was more rabbit fur coming in. And there was this, this little insert you see here, the blue and the uh, brown color or orange color, whatever. They are the hides of fox and the uh, rabbit. There was a correlation between these two data. There may be a slight shift. The year that the fox increases, the rabbit population will go down. The year the fox population, the rabbit population goes up, it is building up fox population. So this is a, called a prey predator. You know, one is hunting, the other gets hunted. It's called a prey predator model. And so far, these two species oscillator so far has not been established in chemical system. 
The example that I gave you, the Belusov-Zabatonsky reaction has minimum of three, actually it has more than three chemical species, but not uh, no system with the two species has been known so far. Our proposal is the florigen, anti-florigen could be responsible for the, uh, this flowering cycle. So it's a modified lotka Volterra mechanism, it's a prey predator model, where you have enormous resources, you know, there is the earth, manure and rain, sun, everything. So B is present in large quantities. The florigen gets generated in the plant. Once you get the first sign, first florigen, more florigens get produced. And somewhere along there, an anti-florigen comes in. It combines with the florigen and stops the process. So there could be an autocatalysis or a feedback mechanism. In the absence of identifying the actual chemicals involved in these species, it remains a proposal. And we also know that this one is going to be dependent on the year of uh, the time of the year. If the flowering starts on April 21, there is about three months period where there is no flowering at all, then it builds up. And next year it is going to happen again. So there must be an annual cycle Superimposed on the annual cycle should be a monthly cycle. Superimposed on that must be some chaos, some fluctuations. So we needed a model to study this. And there is the kinetics. The kinetics part is easy for us to handle. Uh, this uh, Tripathi came to do a summer project. I said, you know, Tripathi, can you do this uh, model? He said, sir, yes, I will do it. Tell me, he's a chemical engineer. Hmm. So if a chemist can do uh, chemical uh, kinetics studies, a chemical engineer can do it even better using computational model, and this is the model that he got. You see, there is an annual cycle. You see a bunch of signal, and then there is a one-year gap. There's a bunch of signal, and then there is a one-year gap. In this, there is a certain periodicity. It's not exactly matching with what we observed, but it has the essential features of what we observe. That is included in that current science paper. So at least we have the basic essence of the system. As I mentioned a little while ago, the, all these oscillations very clearly indicative of a nonlinear dynamical process. It's an open system, no, con no temperature control, no humidity control. You know, many of your colleagues, Jan Murthy, I'm sure will know this. Many of your biology friends will ask for a room where they want to control the light, they want to control the temperature, they want to control the humidity. Here, nothing. It is in nature. Whatever is that here, what, that is what it is. So one has to study and what is interesting is that we looked at the number of flowers. He said, let us go back and look at one flower. It's so beautiful. We call it Mahabharata flower. There is a Panchali, there is a Pandava, there is Kauravas. But if you look at this fibrils or the filaments which represent the Kauravas, you see this pattern. It starts in the middle, there is some orange stuff. Then there is a white. And then there is a little violet, white, violet, and then extremely the extended violet, and the tips are all white. You know, normally we don't bother about these things, but I said, look, let us make a measurement. Because it's very characteristic of a diffusion system. It is diffusing, something is diffusing, something is blocking, and it overcomes the diffusers, and something is blocking. So this florigen, anti-florigen, they are their equivalent, are their consequences. You know, Yashwant Wankar would immediately say, look, I know this, this is an anthocyanin. I can tell from the violet color. I can assure Dr. Jain Murthy also will be able to tell that it must be an anthocyanin, you know. But from the pattern, <coughs> see, I'm not the first one to look at the pattern. This question, how do I get five fingers? And the five fingers are different lengths. You know, this is an unsolved problem. You know, people have tried to solve it, but still it remains unsolved for all practical purposes. It's, it's a nature's thing. If somehow something is happening <clears throat> from a little baby, your fingers start growing <clears throat> and you know somehow to stop thumb here, forefinger here, middle finger here. And once in a while, somebody gets a little extra here or a little extra here. Otherwise, nature seems to do its developmental biology Species, you know, in every one of us, or most of us, we are five fingers of this pattern. How is this pattern formed? What initiates it? What 
propagates it, what terminates it, still remains a very important question to answer. People have tried various things. There's a famous Turing model. You know, he says it's the reaction diffusion and the coupled uh, differential equations to be solved. And there is a Murray Thomas theorem. And then there is a Meinhardt model. But they're all takeoffs or modifications of the Turing model. And you see, <clears throat> the Turing model is that you have a steady state and there are fluctuations and it gives rise to the pattern. Now you can see that we can immediately know the second one here is that of a tiger or a leopard. This one is of a zebra. Hmm. And this one, you know, is, is probably the tiger family. We are able to, and, and these patterns I'm told are not identical. If you go from one zebra to another zebra, the pattern will be slightly different, but this is where your artificial intelligence comes or your native intelligence comes. When I look at the right one, I immediately say, aha, this must be a zebra skin. And this is the somebody, Meinhardt. The person has contributed a lot in understanding patterns. He has a beautiful book on the seashells. How is this pattern formed? They all must be having common origin in uh, our own country, SS Bhatnagar. You know, today, National Science Day, everybody talks about scientific institutions and how Bhatnagar was responsible for setting up of the CSIR labs, etc. And Bhatnagar was able to do his job as chemist in Lahore. I think it was in Lahore. He was curious to know how do you get these patterns in beetroot. And he remembered lysagong rings. Those of you who have done inorganic chemistry in the earlier days would remember. You take potassium dichromate or potassium chromate and mix it with silver nitrate. You get silver chromate. You wait a little while and then it becomes a silver dichromate. And you get these lysagong rings. I, run, I, do, I download a lysagong ring. And I think the, the beetroot cutting is actually from uh, our own, uh, you know, from what my wife bought. And the left side is, is the actual manuscript in German language written in 1926. Remember I told you, I asked my student to measure the length, how long is the white, how long is the violet color? And he came up with a pattern. I said, aha, now we have a pattern to reproduce. Agastya Bhatia was another undergraduate student. He was not interested in doing, you know, these observations. He was interested in doing modeling. It suited me fine. I said, look, let us take the same Lotka pre-predator model. Normally, when you write chemical kinetics equations, you write the rate of, rate of the change of a chemical species. You write down the first order, second order, all that stuff. Normally, you don't add diffusion. Hmm. Because by the time you make this diffusion, all is over. Hmm. But if you are looking at spatial patterns, you must include diffusion. And the, so one includes a diffusion coefficient and one includes the spatial variations. I have done it for one dimension. One can do it for three, two dimensions and three dimensions and solve this problem. And we assume, we have to assume what is diffusing. In this case, it is the pigment which is diffusing. And we, we did not measure the diffusion coefficient of the pigment. In principle, it is a doable experiment. We took the example of rhodamine, which is a dye, and took its value, and we moderated it. It is not in water, it is not in methanol, it is in some kind of a viscous medium. Each one of, you know, each filament there is made up of cells. So we can take a typical cell, so we different coefficient of DNA in E. coli as some number, and we use some reasonable numbers for the rate constants, and we made a model. So we made a model and we and uh, Agastya started showing how the diffusion takes place and the ring formation takes place. And uh, over a period of time, you can see these rings propagate. That's beautiful. But the referee was not happy. He was not impressed. He said, look, you have got one uniform concentric rings. You are not, that is not what your uh, passive flora is. Your passion flower has different size uh, uh, rings. He said, well, that you can do by <coughs> changing the initial conditions. And uh, Agastya was able to show by different initial conditions, you can get slightly different patterns. Since we don't know the diffusion coefficient, we don't know what is diffusing, it is not a bad one. Then the referee had another question. When does the pattern come in? You showed me the matured flower. Which stage is the, the pattern forms? I, I never thought about it. So I asked the same student who killed the plants, you know, can you 
do something about it he went and talked to my colleague rama shastri in biology he is a botanist he works with uh, arabidopsis thaliana he said sir since we cannot find out one plant you know you cannot catch a, a bird and slice it and then wait for it to blossom that's not going to happen you have killed the bird but you can choose buds of different sizes and look for the pattern so this is the this are uh, time so here is an important diagram so he uh, dissected a very small bud very early stages and there is no color inside the filaments are colorless and but the stamen is already formed you know the anthers are already there you can see the anthers have developed their yellow color but the filaments are still colorless which means it is the bud is decided it growing and the color is yet to set in then you look at different sizes of buds a little bigger bud you can see the the violet color set, setting in and you can get a little bigger bud and a little bigger bud a close up picture and this is how it looks like in a mature flower it has not opened up before it is opened up you have a mature flower you know it is going to open at 8 o'clock you cut it at 6 o'clock all the uh, filaments are stuck together and you can see the beautiful pattern so we decided to include them and of course the referee had still many questions what is the size what is the magnification we did all of that and and you can see the close up shot is almost like we are able to see each cell kind of a stuff whether each bit is a cell or not i do not know i have never checked with my colleague but is not a standard pattern it's kind of a it tell tale signs of a diffusion you know the diffusion is kind of a random process it can go little farther little less etc and very typical of a diffusion a process and of course uh, uh, ram sir ram, ram yadav had anticipated all of it even in the beginning when he said you know sir this must be anthocyanin pigment and this is what is responsible stump something is stopping it and that is why you get this pattern so eventually all that story we wrote and we published last year in journal of biosciences and somebody out there read it and then sent me a message saying he enjoyed reading my paper and wants me to come and give a talk or give a talk on, online i will do that that's our paper now if you thought my job is i'm almost done uh before sharang sta- you know starts looking at his watch i think it's about 40 45 minutes i have been talking so for whatever i did is not very typical of a chemist for a chemist this is what has happened you know this is what yashwant would like to do jayan murthy may like to do get the filaments crush them and you know put it through alcohol water mixture this is in i think it is in methanol you get a violet material and you can put it through tlc plate uh, we are you can put it through column depending upon the amount of quantity amount of stuff you have and all this was uh, rama shastri organic chemist you know murthy and uh, vankar they know him and so they he did all these studies he said the only problem is any student that is given this problem leaves our lab therefore he didn't want to give this problem to anybody else so he gave it to one or two postdocs who left the lab but he followed through this you know color changes then there is a muck that comes in residue that is left he, he looks at it in, in ultraviolet and this is very important record a spectrum he also recorded the mass spec and came up with the uh, mass of a few chemicals that are responsible for the color i am not showing you the mass spec i am just showing you the uv visible absorption spectrum and he recorded uh, the emission spectrum also we found a very interesting result the more the, the higher the concentration or less the dilution less is the fluorescence i said you have self absorption ak mishra of iit madras told me you know actually this is called inner filter effect well if you want to know what is the inner filter effect that is there published in journal of photochemistry photobiology ak mishra was a student of dogra in iit kanpur at one time and uh, so this is we learned you know so the study continues i have taken the help of my colleague arijit day and his phd student she has graduated and uh, they do a fast an ultra fast spectroscopy they have measured the lifetime they have uh, they have exponential decay they have one uh, uh, decay con- they have two decay constants we need to still identify what is the chemical or a mixture of chemicals responsible for the violet color 
and therefore, and then predict its absorption uh, where lambda max using theoretical studies. We have the data of, as I said, absorption and emission spectrum, and we still have to interpret and the project. Thank you. What I have tried to give you is an interesting problem. At least to me, it was an interesting problem and uh, how we looked at it from various angles and found something very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You would like to give a round of applause. Uh, sir, with your permission, we would like to move to the question answer session. If so either they can ask or you can read out whatever is convenient for you. Yes. In the meantime, I'll put this quote of Darwin, you know. Murthy? Yeah. Jayan Murthy. <laughs> Sir, you are muted. Oh. I was eventually going to ask. In fact, I was pleased to see that you had all this, uh, you know, the violet uh, ones separated and you attempted to sort of find out what the species is, be it uh, anthocyanin or whatever. I think he, Ramashastri looks like did not get to the structure of the compound, right? Eventually. See, the problem is, uh, you know, these are all, there's a glucoside linkage. Uh -huh. So he has to hydrolyze and get rid of the glucose part. Uh, and then, depending upon the pH, it can uh, change color. So he has to crystallize. I mean, you, know, you, you as a chemist, as an organic chemist, will know how to deal with it. Yes, as I said, you know, since a student, any student who is given this problem leaves the lab, you know, he wouldn't like <laughs> He would like to keep the lab, not the problem. But was there also an attempt, Professor Satyamurthy? For example, you showed time-dependent, basically gra gradual transformation from being colorless to developing violet color and becoming completely violet, which means there is something that is undergoing a structural change. So did you get to the, the, the pre-stage before it turned into the you know, violet color? And see, I mean, start, start you know, analyzing what the species there is and which is becoming violet, right? I think that- Yeah, I know, yeah. See, yeah, the answer is no, we have not. But to clear, from the intensity of the color, we could see the onset of color and we could see the growth in, uh, in color. And we presume that if we look at the violet color in the mature flower, uh, that will give you the, uh, you know, the inclination. It will give you an inkling of what is responsible. As the, the mass spectra showed, it is not just one chemical. It is a bunch of chemicals. Bunch, yeah. It, it, I'm sure there are... Yeah, they're all derivatives of, you know, they're they all anthocyanins of various kinds. Hello. So, the, so the third paper is yet to be written up. You know, that, that can be done only when we identify the chemical <coughs> and uh, back it up with this uh, lambda max and the emission spectrum and the decay constant and the theoretical interpretation. Yeah. Mahesh, if you want to grow it in your backyard and you take a look at it, you know, it will not, it will not give you a kind of a results that you get. You know, you publish so many papers, so many <coughs> cover, <coughs> cover pages, you know. But if yeah, it has uh, aroused your curiosity, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it's quite an exciting problem, I see. I have a connected question here, which will, which will probably also benefit the students. You know, if you were, start, uh, if you were to start again as a student, um, which out of the two distinct type of research that you have performed, you would like to start with? Uh, as a theoretical chemist or, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, ecology related <coughs> that you have discussed now? Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question, Mahesh. <clears throat> My father wanted me, it like happens most of the families even today. He said, you join biology so that you can become a doctor. I said, no, I want to do mathematics. He said, no, no, you listen to me. You know, I, I belong to that generation. You listen to your father. So I filled up the form. I went for admission and the principal said, you know, you, you have 100 out of 100 in maths. Why are you taking biology? 
I said, my father wants me to take biology. He said, no, 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 you take mathematics. Then my father said, oh, it's too late, isn't it? He said, no, I'm the one who should say too late. It is not, you know, we are not talking about 2022 with the RTA era, etc. you know, where everybody, everybody is watching over everybody else. Those were the days. I'm very fond of saying you were CMS college in uh, Kottayam, right? CMS college is in Kottayam, right? Yeah. yeah. They're very fond of telling how Mr. Narayanan, you know, who became the president of India, then he wanted to be admitted in their college. He didn't have money to join the college. So the principal told him, don't worry, you come and join. And uh, then when he went to join, they asked him to pay some fees. And he said, you know, but the principal told me I can come and join. And they said, no, how can you join without uh, paying? Then uh, his, the principal's wife, said, no, no, this young man came on that day. You told him that you can, don't worry about the money. You come and join. He said, oh, I said that. Okay, you join. So that is how Mr. Narayanan was admitted in your CMS college. Today, I do not know if any government college or a private college will be able to do that. So come back to this. So I, then my father and, you know, this is a conversation between me and the principal and my father. So the principal struck off the biology admission, gave me admission in, in, in mathematics. So I wanted to do physics. You know, those days in 60s, physics was a romantic subject. It still is, you know, how the particles are formed, you know, space, everything. So I wanted to do physics. My chemistry teacher told me, no, no, you must do chemistry. You know, our decisions were made not by us, but by somebody else. My father said biology, I felt biology. My teacher said apply for chemistry, I applied for chemistry. So I got into chemistry. And quickly it became clear that uh, my friend, my, my lab partner, who was actually the head of the department's daughter, we would do experiments. She would get the right result, you know, within the 2% that is expected, whereas mine will be way off, 20% error, 15% error. I never figured this out. Hmm. Both of us doing experiments, same stock solution, same, you know, standard, etc. Why is it or how is it that she gets the right result, you know? Of course, I could easily say she was the head of the department's daughter. You know, but I don't think that was the case. And uh, then later on, years later, my professor told me, you know, when it came to evaluating your practical results, we had to decide to pass you, you know, let you pass. We didn't want to fail you. So, but, the, but when you added the theory mark and the practical mark, you came on the top of the class. So I said, okay. So in some sense, uh, that explains as to why I did not do it. I wish I had gone in to do experiments, even if I was a disaster in doing it. I do not know. My heart was in maths, physics. As I said, uh, whatever I do today, you know, all of my helium H2 plus story and all, it's all essentially physics. Okay, I give it a quote of the chemistry, uh, but it's all physics, all mathematics, uh, mathematical physics, computer modeling, etc. But uh, today, uh, see, my one of my biology colleagues told me, you know, Dr. Satyamurthy, you are spending a lot of time on this. You know, this may not lead to any publications. I said, yeah, at my age, how do I, how does it matter? You know, I am not, you know, worried about this and that. And you see, none of this involved PhD students. They are all undergraduate students. If a publication came out, it is fine. If it didn't, it didn't matter. Every one of them, Surendra Goyal, you know, he is a crazy character. He left the program. Uh, for, for whatever reason. I never understood as to why he had to leave the program. Whereas uh, Rasmi uh, went on to do, I think she went to University of Illinois, Urbana, Champaign. Agastya Betty went to uh, University College, London, and so on. Uh, Tripathi went into software industry. Like these students have done, as an undergraduate, they still have the curiosity in, left in them. And they are still can undertake risk taking on what you know in your stage of a career, you can say they can do projects where they can take risk. So any risk taking project that you have, you assign it to your under integrated MSc student, no problem. Whereas your PhD student may not be happy, and your postdocs will definitely not like to do it. I'm sorry I gave a long answer to your short question, but I think I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sharang, are we done? I don't think anyone else is there.
Yeah, I, I have one more question. Yeah, apart from the synchronized flowering, are there any other distinct models that are available to explain the flowering pattern? See, flowers of various kinds have various flowering pattern. The only other known example of a synchronous pulse flowering is in in a flower in uh, in, in arid conditions. In, in in my paper, I have given reference to that one. The synchronous pulsing is pulse flowering is not common, but many flowers occur in busts. For example, come May, you will have the, I think it's called a jungle fire or something. You know, suddenly there will be this bloom of red flowers. You know, Jayan Murthy would have seen it in Bangalore. Hmm. Uh, so you will see this, this jungle fire, you know, blooming all over. Of course, there is annual uh, flowering is there. And there are flowers like uh, jasmine, which are seasonal. And uh, to what extent people have, whether people have studied the pulse flowering in uh, jasmine, I do not know. Uh, I, I let me answer it. I, they let me say, since I am not an expert in the area, I do not know. Uh, all I know is that it is not common. Yeah. But it has interesting societal and economical implications. If this model is to become common in flowers, supposing you know the day Jain Murthy's daughter's marriage is fixed, he wants all the flowers to be delivered. And if the bot you know is a down of the cycle coincide on that day, you know, he's not going to get the garlands. But if it is a peak, he is very happy instead of getting, you know, whatever garland that he ordered, he will get double the number of garlands, which are half the price. Okay. So it can have a very important, the entire, you know, I, I live in Bangalore, a lot of jasmine, I'm told, comes from Tamil Nadu. Uh, that uh, if they go into synchronous pulse flowering, there will be a serious uh, market implication. Thank you, sir. That was again an excellent talk. Got to learn lots of new. Thank things. you. Thank you. Can I add a comment here? Yeah, please. Uh, good evening. I'm Hema. So uh -huh. uh, when you were speaking about jasmines. Yeah, for Hema, Hema, for Hema, this runs in the family, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, what happens is that uh, jasmines and a lot of uh, you know related species of jasmines uh, bloom at night. And it, it is known today that they follow the lunar cycle. So you have, uh, you know, the, during the full moon, you have massive flowering and then it wanes with the moon. And again, when you have full moon, it sort of peaks up and down. So this is thought to be, uh, thought to be because they attract moths for pollination at night. So, and moths are sensitive to light levels and they can forage better the flowers during full moon nights. So they do follow this pattern of uh, flowering. Uh, okay. Well, since you say it, I'll, I'll I take it because I do not see the market fluctuation. Uh, I know I mean, uh, this is no no. It it flowers over a long period of time, several months together. But if you look at the numbers of flowers per night, okay. as you approach full moon, there is a burst of flowering. Okay. It's okay. not that there's no flowering at all. Okay. Okay. So there is a variation. Okay. I understand. Also, there is not, they are not looking at an individual plant. They are looking at a, a field of jasmine, I suppose. So the fluctuations can uh, adjust with each other. Uh, so there is a request to show the Darwin's quote again. Ah. <laughs> Who is interested in Satya Murthy? Let us listen to Darwin. See, if you read uh, Darwin's uh, biography, uh, you see that sitting in his uh, place, he, you know, number one, he didn't take up a regular academic position. He tried for some position, didn't work out, and then decided to stay in his place and collect data and write the papers and eventually, you know, his book uh, or book, you know, books, depending upon how you look at okay, right? I wrote his books. But it was, uh, and he wrote down letters to a lot of people asking them to send him data, samples, etc., and collected them and put together. So observing and recording, and of course, finally publishing is very important. 
I guess in uh, in in his Darwin's time, he didn't have to worry too much about the publications, but he did decide to uh, you know write a few papers and publish uh, publish a few books. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, I had one question. Yeah. Sir, uh, when you were referring to like uh, when four plants were sold in your garden, sir, all these experiments, like wherever you grew the plants, they were in your garden, right? They were all in the director's garden in Nicer Mohali. Okay. Uh, so, so the you know Mali brought one plant and you know my wife went with him and uh, first time it was planted and next time he brought four plants and planted them. Yeah. So all of these are uh, exposed to the atmospheric conditions, right? Yeah, yeah, they are all open. You know, they are in the open garden. Yeah. So when you collect the data, how do you know that the data which you have collected is not tampered with a lot or it is not? It is reliable data to do some analysis on it. Some some error some error would definitely be there because some some days I was not counting, some days Rosmi was not counting. Then I first see in the, the the register was kept in the security guards' room. So sometimes the security guards would have numbers which were not right. So evening when the driver drops me, he would count the flowers that had blossomed that day. And they would try to match the two numbers. And sometimes it goes in the creeper goes up and you miss a few flowers. Or when it became bushy, you missed a few flowers. Those kind of errors, error bars are there. If somebody said, look, their error bar must be 10%, I will not contest it. Thank you. Sir. Sir, uh, probably can you stop presentation? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Done. Yes. Shara? Yes, yes. Sir, sure, now we are coming to a close almost before the vote of thanks. Can we have the pleasure of presenting a Memento virtually, the real one will reach you by post. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Looks thank very nice. Yeah. Of course, you have a beautiful uh, logo. Uh -huh. After seeing the logo of Aisar Thirunandapuram, a student in Aisar Mohali was very upset. He said, You know, our logo is very simple. I look at Aisar Thirunandapuram. So I called him, Look, you know, this is something that we chose. It was approved by the Board of Governors. Now I cannot do anything about it. Of course, Jim is like the Mobius strip. And he added some additional stuff to it and leave it. It's an abstract. It's a beautiful logo. And uh, thank you for, uh, you know. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we love it too. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the visit. And uh, Sarang, can you please take it? Yes. So I'll move on to the vote of thanks. Uh, I would like to thank Professor N. Satyamurthy on behalf of the Isaac Ramadabram family for delivering such a thought-provoking lecture. Uh, I would like to thank the professor in charge of admission, Professor Srinivasa uh, the Dean of Student Affairs, Professor Utpal Manna, Dr. Jishi Varghese, and the faculty in charge of Science and Technology Council, Dr. Nisha uh, N. Kannan, and Dr. Sridhar Dutt. I would like to thank the IT department for helping us with the technical aspect of the event and ensuring that the Zoom and YouTube run without any interruptions. Finally, I would also like to thank today's audience. With this, we have come to an end of another National Science Day. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you all. So I take leave now. <coughs> thank you. We hope to see you in the campus, sir. Yeah, I, I also look forward to it. Sure. Sure. I was hoping to see Yashwant in campus, but now I'm told he is in Mumbai. Maybe by the time I come, he will also come down. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look okay. forward to seeing you sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Bye. And Thank you. Both.